Well, I welcome you to our Raising the Dead broadcasts at MyMiracleTV.org as well as RaisingTheDead.org and I am Dr. Andy Audu, the man of God, the Duke of Man of God from Tarawa State in Nigeria, but living here in the city of Albany, Georgia, and I'm really very excited again, thanking God for the opportunity that he has given me every time coming to you on regular basis or on daily basis uh, through our web broadcasting internationally or global, our web streaming, which is uh, on television on the internet. Uh, some of you might be watching on your normal television or on your cellular phone or whatever gadgets you might be having, but it's a pleasure really to welcome you to our Raising the Dead broadcast. And I hope that you've been enjoying it uh, around the world and I want to encourage you to let other people, friends of yours, wherever they may be, on the surface of this planet, that they can go to my miracle TV, that org, as well as raising the day, that org, and enjoy not only what I'm preaching or teaching, but as I've said it all over, uh, let me repeat myself, I am an action-oriented person. I love demonstration. I, I love to put, you know, deeds uh, to my words. And, and so uh, I pray that God will use the message to challenge you, encourage you, so you can put action or you can become an action taker. Amen. Um, for many, many weeks I've been talking really about um, the financial blessings of God, or I can say the financial freedom or financial security package or concept that God has given us through the Bible that we can enjoy, especially, especially for those of us that are saved, those of, those, those of us that are born again, or those of us whose sins are forgiven, and those of us who have become God's children through Jesus Christ our Lord, or those of us who have receive the gift of eternal life from God through Jesus Christ. God has a special plan for you and you and you and you and me. And all this of the plan, the entirety of the plan is revealed in the Bible, the Holy Scriptures, the Bible. And by you and I going there to study this, we discover uh, God's plan, God's purpose, or God's agenda for our lives. Okay. Um, I have shared so many things previously. Uh, I know that uh, in different religious belief systems and even in Christianity or Christendom, sometimes we'll be hearing some teachings about the fact that God just wants us to be saved from sin and then he wants us to live poor, miserable, disgusted, broke, and all of these. Uh, I don't totally believe to, I, mean, I don't believe this kind of uh, teaching. I have said in one of my broadcasts that God is a super, mega, hyper rich God. The whole heaven of heavens, uh, billions and gazillions of galaxies of stars and other planets, and millions that are there in this space. God has put some resources inside those planets or underneath those planets or on top of those planets or in the skies of those planets. He has endowed them with so many blessings, but particularly we human beings will live on this planet Earth. And so our Earth already is very, very rich. It's endowed with so many material riches. And to take an example, I know I came from Nigeria, Africa. The continent of Africa is entirely floating upon mineral resources, tremendous mineral resources. In fact, Africa has become the envy of the whole world. world. But also, yes, we're envying Europe and America and Western industrialized nations. But look at the key thing here. As much as God has blessed Africa, the soil of Africa, the waters of Africa, the air of Africa, the landmark of Africa, I can say almost like if the land of Israel is floating upon milk and honey, then I don't know exactly what I can tell you about the land of Africa. That piece of real estate called African continent is floating upon tremendous riches wealth. For example, we have gold, diamond, uranium, gases, petrol, color bike, and on and on and on. Many, many, many mineral resources. But you see, the key thing is that we African people 
really sad to say we have not really dug our feet on the ground to pull our heads off and pull our brains off and to allow God to help us to tap into the mind power, the mentality, the hidden resources inside our spirits, our minds and our brains to use our hands and invent and innovate. I'm not saying that African people are ignorant or lazy. No, not at all. There was a time when you read about the ancient African civilization in the time of Egypt, for example, and Ethiopia, and Sudan, and Libya, all of those nations are in the Bible. The Bible mentions them very, very well. Uh, and so there was a time that Africa was the world superpower. We invented a lot of things in medicine, in irrigation, that means agriculture, in engineering, like building bridges, and especially the pyramids of Egypt. Uh, everybody knows that the pyramids used to be like some of the wonders of the, you know, the ancient world and um, in military power, economic power, education and on and on, Africa was the world superpower. That was when we were you truly using the capacity of our brains and our God-given abilities to think and be creative and innovative. Sadly, after some time, we have allowed sin to take over. You see, sin can paralyze and maimed and incapacitated you and I. So, am I then saying that Europe and America seem less? No. You know, the, 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 the window of opportunity has been shifting, 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 shifting. But particularly the Jewish people are very brainy people, very, very blessed. And even when they were dispersed around the whole world, and then the Arabs or the Palestinians came and occupied their land after King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, came and decimated Jerusalem and, and captured the land of Judea, um, the Jewish people were sent, sold into the, into the diaspora all over the world. The land of Israel that God had told Abraham and his descendants that the land was floating over milk and honey, literally almost it became like a desert. In such a way that when the Arabs or the Palestinians settled down there for more than a thousand years, they were not able to cultivate that desert or that arid land. Until after 1940, uh, I think 46, 47, or 48, when Israel got their independence and the Jews started migrating back to the land of Israel, then they went back and started tilting, taking care of the soil, the land of Israel, the land flowing on, on milk and honey. That land became so vital, so blessed. And even the Dead Sea and a, a lot of uh, other pieces of property all around the defined Palestinian. Uh, or the land of Palestine, as we call it, which is the land, the promised land or the land of Israel. Israel is right now sending her resources, her food, agricultural things around the world. The economy of Israel is really climbing so hard that, you know, it, Israel is becoming almost an envy of the whole world right now. Why? You see, God can give us the resources, you know, in the soil, in water, in the air, the atmosphere around us. But if our eyes are blinded, or darkened by sin, even though we're sitting in front of the resources that could make us eat, rich, sorry, will make us rich, because our minds are numbed, or they're sleeping, or they're almost like paralyzed, they're inactive, we might die even upon our well without even knowing it. A story was told, I remember as, uh, as a young person while I was living, living in Africa, this story was told about a chicken that uh, since early in the morning, and you know chicken, you know, or cocks, they know how to wake us up in every community, wherever you have chicken or cock, so they wake up, you know, you know, they wake up everybody early in the morning, the signal in the sun is rising up now, get up out of your bed, wake up, and it's a busy day, rise up. So this chicken was sitting down upon a bag with a sack. And the sack was so loaded with so much of blessings. But the chicken stayed there since the morning all the way to evening time without going out to get food and was starving itself to death. So around evening time now, that chicken I sort of flapped its wings and it you know, cried, Koo -koo -koo -koo! and the wild flapped its wings so strongly there was something that got out of that sack, out of that bath. A small grain that fell, fell, fell out. And that chicken dropped, you know, 
flew down a little bit or jumped down and pick up, you know, the, the, the grain. And then another one, again, dropped and he picked it up. He tried to climb back and then again, keep on singing, you know, and, and the more it shook itself, the bat pulled out more grains. And the chicken went and started eating and eating. And finally it came back, it realized, wow, I mean, it's a fiction, you know, but it, there's a lesson we can learn. There's a spiritual or moral lesson we can learn how to be. The chicken said to himself, look, I've been starving myself to death. While I was sitting upon wealth of corn, food, I have grains here that I could have eaten since in the morning until evening time until I couldn't eat anymore. But I was starving myself to death, still living on the sack of abundance. Now, you see, spiritually, the same thing. You and I. Wherever you live, in any nation or continent, or town or village or city, God has put a lot of resources all around us. In fact, even in this tough economy we're living in, uh, in 2014, since 2008, 2009 till 2014, and the nations of the world have been shaken up because of the recession we went through. Does it mean then that money was lacking on the planet? No way. Does it mean that petrol and gases and Gold and diamond are lacking. No, they're still here. You see, we allow rumors and other things to brainwash us, especially sometimes the rich, to be thinking that, oh, they have the secret to making more money and becoming richer. While the poor are thinking, okay, there's scarcity, there's scarcity, there's scarcity. While the rich are thinking, even in the midst of all this international outcry that we're going through a recession, the rich look at it as an opportunity to become richer. You see, they open up their eyes, spiritually and physically, their brains, they say, look, let me position myself and make something work so that I can become richer. Now, I'm speaking to those of you who might have been broke, busted, and disgusted, or you're living in absolute poverty. Since you were born, you grew up in poverty, and you are now old, you're still in, you're struggling in poverty, and maybe you're thinking that, that all the race of your few years you have left, you have to die that way. I have got... God's good news for you, you don't have to. Like that chicken, wake up. The opportunities are right there in front of your nose, in front of your eyes. You can smell them, you can hear them, you can feel them. But what do you do with your mind power that God has given you? You've got to make something happen. 